Hey, I'm Pouty Face, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Before we do jump in and talk about the new singles, I want to dive in and talk about this upcoming tour announcement, or this tour announcement for this upcoming tour, Life on Mars with Young Blood. Uh, I feel like that's the best way to kick off tours coming back. Um, so dive me in, talk to me about uh, what you're looking forward to on this new tour. Yeah, so actually when uh, when I figured out I was on the tour, I was in CVS and my manager called me and he was like, he wouldn't tell me who the artist was for the longest time. He's like, look, I don't want to get your hopes up. Um, I'll let you know if you book it. And then he calls me and he goes, guess what? You're going on tour with Youngblood. And I was like, no way. So I was trying so hard to keep my cool. But um, yeah, talk about a way to kick off live music. I think this tour is going to be so phenomenal. There's Palais Royale, they got Upsol. Um, and just being on tour with, Dom, I think, is going to be such a great learning experience for me because, I mean, he's a phenomenal live performer. Um, and I I think the most exciting part, though, is the fact that I'm finally going to get to see fans in, in real life because I really haven't had any of that FaceTime with them um, up until, until now. I love that this lineup, everyone on this lineup is just full of energy. Um, and you are also with, with your new material and stuff, everything is just like in your face. And I love it. Cause I feel like the experience being at these live shows is just going to be like worth this two year wait. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. You gotta come. Yes, I definitely will. I definitely will. Now, as far as like you prepping for this tour, because it's going to come real fast. So how are you prepping, um, for tour, especially after not being able to tour for so long? Yeah, so actually I just, funny enough, played like my first live show like a week ago. Um, it's just like a single song, but other than that, I've been in rehearsal, rehearsal rooms. I've been running. I've been on the treadmill. I've been taking care of my body because I think that's the one thing that I've heard just from peers of mine and management and all types of um, people in the industry is that tour is so fun, but it's brutal. Um, and I just want to be able to put on the best show I possibly can every night for every crowd. Um, so really just getting my health, mental health, physical health uh, in, into alignment. You got to learn to sing while you're on the treadmill just uh, so we can. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> your your music is, you know, it, it's it's full of energy. So, I mean, in order to be able to sustain that for an entirety of a tour, you got to be prepped and ready to go. Totally. And not to mention the fact that like... Uh, singing in the studio is a totally different beast as compared to like singing live. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the, the molds in my ears. I'm going to learn how to properly hold and sing with a mic. And I can't wait to play with live musicians. I'm so excited that like live music, music, guitars, drums, bass. I'm so excited that all of that is making a comeback. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about the impact that not having live shows had on your recording process for your new music, especially the ones that just dropped right now. So not having that feel of the audience in front of you and that energy of being on stage, how would you say that it impacted you uh, during the, the recording process of these tracks? I think I was just going into it based on blind feel. Um, TikTok helped a lot, actually, because I was able to tease things and get a feel for what people were connecting with there. Um, but it definitely made it a little more challenging to not be able to see people's initial genuine reactions face to face. No, I got to say, I really love out of these two tracks. I really love Pretty Boy. Um, the energy from beginning to end is just insane. And it gives me this like shiny toy guns meets uh, La Tigre kind of vibe. I feel like you marinated like, I mean, obviously you created your own, but it's like, I, feel, I can, if you told me that they were inf influences or inspirations, like I can totally see that. Can you tell me a little bit about the creative process of your music and kind of figuring out your own lane as an artist? Totally. Okay. So with that song, um, with that song, I went in with, uh, it was actually a session that I wasn't going to go into initially. It was just one of those days where I was like, I don't really feel like I can write anything, but I went anyways and 
thank God that I did because I ended up getting that song out of the process. And um, Mike Wise, who produced the song, ended up uh, just playing a few tracks. And I was like, whoa, what is that? It sounds so shiny and energetic and a little bit nostalgic and a little like garbage, not garbage, but like the band garbage, you know? And um, yeah, it, uh, my co-writer, Maddie, was like, well, what do you want to write about? And we just thought it would be such a cool concept. And I've never really heard anyone sing about this before. Um, just sort of flipping the expectations of what masculinity looks like and what relationships have to look like. Um, so yeah, creatively, I think that also affects my process every time I'm trying to write about something that I feel like I haven't heard someone write about before. During this writing process, I mean, you've been writing for some time uh, on your own. So getting to collaborate with different writers, different uh, writing collaborators, how does that kind of play a role in your in your mindset whenever you're writing new material? And how would you say that they helped you kind of be a better writer during these sessions? I think every co-writer brings a different flavor to the session. Um, every writer has sort of their own little twist. And I've been lucky enough to work with a, a lot of different writers and sort of get a taste for the ways that so many different people write, which is a great learning tool. Um, because as a writer, just personally, I was used to writing one specific way and it really opened up the horizons for how I can go into a song and I can go in the booth and I can freestyle melodies or we can start with a concept or we can just start from a track or I can write from personal experience. I think writing with other people really helped me start to write about my real life. Um, not that I wasn't doing that before, but I think I was doing that a little bit less. I think I was just making up stories a little bit more and I was, I was more interested in just the lyricism and the, the way I was crafting an image. Um, so I think a lot of the music I'm putting out now still has that storytelling lyrical root that I really care about, but a lot of it is more personal to me, which has been super cathartic and amazing. Would you say that you were scared to be vulnerable? Is that why you weren't writing it the way you were before? I think so. And also learning how to write with other people forced me to put my ideas out there. And that's still a process I think I balance between. Um, you know, it's it's a little scary sometimes to put out an idea and say, have someone say, oh, that's that's not cool or mm, I don't think so. Um, I think I'm trying to take it less personally because I feel like all ideas are good ideas, throw it out there. Um, so it's, it's made me a little bit more fearless um, with, with my ideas, I think, and holding on a little bit less tightly to what I think is the right way. I mean, everyone thinks their lyric is the best lyric, but that might not necessarily be the case. So what challenge would you say you faced uh, during the writing or the recording process of Pretty Boys and Boys Anonymous? So Boys Anonymous was super easy because I just went into the session. And I was like, God, I'm so sick of this shit. Um, and I told my co-writers like the whole story and what was going on. I was like, dude, like, let's just write something addressing that and my co-writer Maisie she was like what about you know how they have Alcoholics Anonymous what if we had boys anonymous like call our hotline get help and I was like yes that's so cool it's so sick um, so Maisie really really anchored in the concept and from there we took my perspective and my story and we integrated those two things and then with Pretty Boy that was more of a concept um, based writing session and I, uh, yeah, that one was also just super, both, both sessions were super easy, super seamless. And I think I didn't feel like I had to try really hard to get both of those songs out of me. Why would you say you wanted to release these two songs together instead of uh, putting them apart from each other? I've got a lot of music, dude. I have <laughs> so, if you even knew, like the amount of music I have just sitting in a folder somewhere, um, don't get me wrong it's great to release a single and be able to focus on that one single but I felt like 
if I don't release both of them now together, I don't know when I'm going to release them. Um, and just by coincidence, they ended up both sort of treading the same lane being about relationships, one of them being about the hyper masculine thing that you get the boy and the other side being something more unconventional. Um, so I, I just think that with this project, it just made sense to put them together. What do you feel you learned about yourself vocally during the recording process of these tracks? With Pretty Boy especially, um, I think this is my favorite thing to do. And I don't know why. When we're writing, I will be very low key. I think I just want to sing through the song and you know, I'm sort of mumbling. I get the melody down. I'm thinking of ways I'm going to perform it when I get in the booth. Um, and with Pretty Boy, I remember that recording experience. I was like, this just feels good. I was like, I'm just going to give it absolutely everything I have. I had an hour to record it. So we we're like, let's cut the vocals now. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. And I was just hyper focused on getting the most high energy intense takes that I could um, so I really if you listen to the song I put my guts into that song and I'd believe you if you told me that you just went into the studio and that was one whole freestyle session because that like I can't you don't have any room for breathing during the song so like it doesn't seem like there was different sessions of writing uh for for the lyrics of the song um how did you go about that yeah, altogether, I think there was like four or five takes total of like all the way through. And that's actually how we ran through and got a lot of the, the vocals for the final cut is I just ran through it like three, four times. And usually the first few takes end up being the best takes because it's the rawest, most authentic version of the take. You're not overthinking it. You're not like, where should I? Where should I, how should I sing this part? Maybe I should be a little softer, maybe I should be a little bit louder. Um, so I usually try to just not overthink it and get the best take I can the first time. Now, when it comes to kind of finding your cadence and your pockets for your songs, uh, you mentioned you do have a lot of songs written. So how do you not sound the same on every song? I feel like pre although they're in the same realm of uh, um, like relationship uh, wise, they don't really sound the same. So how do you go about as far as like figuring out your cadences and your pockets within every song that you're writing? That's a good question. I don't know if I think about it. I think, I, I think it just happens. I think um, it's less about think, less, more about feel. How do these words make me feel? If I was speaking to the person who I'm directing this song at, how would I speak to them? If I was, if the song was written about you, how would I be sing singing it to you right now, you know? And with your producers on these tracks, uh, how would you say they helped you kind of make your vision come to life? Like how did they, uh, what kind of input did they have in order to create it the way that they did for these final tracks? I love producers so much because they're so open to feedback and I can come back to them with five, six, seven rounds of notes and they're like, sure, no problem, we can try that. And even if that's not what we end up going with, um, the producers that I work with, which I'm so grateful for, is the fact that they're very open to trying different things. Um, I also, I also love a producer, which I think Mika, who did Boys Anonymous, and Mike, who did Pretty Boys. Um, I love a producer who nails the vocal, and if they hear something vocally that they want me to try or if they want it to be more whiny or if they think they're hearing something a little bit more whaley or a little bit less energy uh, they will tell me and give me some input and it's it's all collaboration so they've been awesome now the fact that you were able to kind of test out your music your your lyrics uh through tiktok and being able to hear back from your fans your audience what kind of impact would you say that had on you kind of figuring out what your lane is as far as your genre or what kind of music you'd be writing? I found that on TikTok, a lot of my audience is female. Um, so I think a lot of the music that has, that the fans have demanded off of TikTok is a lot of stuff that 
I think at its core comes from a feminine perspective, but it comes from a feminine perspective rooted in angst and rage. And that is something that I think I've had to balance throughout my life is femininity and rage and angst, which isn't necessarily the prettiest, sweetest, most feminine thing. But I'm so glad that they have reacted to the songs that they've reacted to because those songs have uh, have been the ones that I've genuinely connected with the most. So it's almost so interesting because because the songs that they're picking out make they just make sense and even in the order that they're asking for them it just the way that they're collaborating with me to build the story it's crazy it's like they're in on it but they're not during the creative process of your music so far what have you learned about yourself that you didn't know you could do before or you didn't know about yourself before i can be loud i'm allowed to be loud um i was always the quietest kid like almost to the point where i was mute would not speak don't call on me in class I don't want to hear I don't want to answer your questions I was just a very quiet kid and that's that's been so exciting for me to be able to whether it be a, a, a character that I'm put, that I'm putting on or just a part of myself that I'm allowing to come out now um, I'm I'm allowed to be loud that's awesome well congratulations with the new singles and Looking forward to this tour with Youngblood um, later on. I think it kicked, for you, you're doing it in February um, yeah. of 2022. So I'm looking forward to catching you live. And thank you again for taking the time to do this. Great. Thanks for having me.